Last time on the Rock Chuck Olympics, our competitors made their way to the ridge line and had to alternate between their carbine and their pistol in an environment that was not very forgiving. This time on the Rock Chuck Olympics, our competitors will push their long range rifle shooting skills to the limit, shooting a four foot tall Rock Chuck sized target at over 1200 yards. Wait till you see what cartridges they have to use to try and hit this target. The 2023 Rock Chuck Olympics, sponsored by RCBS, celebrating 80 years of precision. DM Targets, quality steel targets built by shooters for shooters. Stag Arms, there is no weak side. Caldwell Shooting Products, Wheeler Gunsmithing Tools and Tipton Gun Cleaning Products. Well, Gavin, after an epic day one, here we go on day two of the competition. We've got a whole slew of things lined up for the competitors today. What are we doing? So there's a couple things. The PRS stage is going to really push some of these competitors out of their comfort zone. They're going to have to do some positional stuff. They're going to have to shoot off of a barricade, a tank trap, and then they're going to take things out to further distances. And then we've got Harold. Harold is sitting. Ooh, Harold. Harold the, the epic Harold the stage. Four foot tall gangster rock chuck is sitting at 1280 yards and if the wind kicks up this is going to be crazy they've got three different rifles with the difficulty progressively increasing each time they switch oh, i i am not envious of trying to make that shot having seen where the target is that is going to be an uphill battle quite literally yes can you imagine taking a 55 grain fmj projectile right we're rock chucking this is not high tech stuff and pushing it to 1280 out of a 16 inch carving. I can't, I can't imagine insane. that. I can't imagine that. I, I mean, at that distance, you're just kind of hoping it hits the target. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the competitors are milling about. We're going to load up in the rigs and get up the hill. Let's do it. Well, John, we're down here. This is both the 100 yard range for the final side in before the ELR range and the shooting position for the ELR range. That's right, there's a four foot tall rock chuck at 1,280 yards. Harold the rock chuck has been talking some major smack on these guys <laughs> and they want some retribution. That's right. Let's see how the shooters are gonna do. Okay, Eric, we're about to kick it off here. Big things are expected from you. How are you gonna handle this? <laughs> I'm just gonna spray and pray, man. Is that how you shoot F-Class? No, but this is what I would call almost an impossible shot. It's a 16 inch uh, carbine, 223, 55 grain, 1,280 yards, Woo. unverified data. So yeah. Now, come on, Eric, you've got a 6.5 Creedmoor to work with. You've got a six arc bolt gun to work with to get your, get your act together. It's not gonna be that bad. Well, I hope it's not gonna be bad. The Mirage is horrendous right now. It's gonna be hard to even yep. see the target, much less spot the misses. Hang on. Ma! The meatloaf! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, let's see how this is going to go. Good luck. And I'm rolling. That's right, John. Gavin, Eric Cortina is on the line. That's Do right. Do you think he can pull this one off? I think it's likely. Watch out, Harold. Your days are done. Harold is out there taunting all of us. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a world-class shooter recently returned from South Africa Gavin explain to us all how difficult really is this shot this shot the difficulty level is highly dependent on the conditions if you've got wind you've got a challenge on your hands and we definitely are gonna have a little bit of wind throughout this valley yep we've got it crossing mirage. back and we forth good. lots of mirage Perhaps a rock chuck or two throwing things at the bullet while it's flying by. We don't know. First shot down. I see he, he made a dial, so he's got some sort of indicator here. Shooting a little bit faster than I expected. It's getting quiet in the room. Putting a little bit of elevation adjustment in there.
Oh. oh. You can see the dust kick up. <laughs> Harold's like, what the F, dude? What was that? What is this? <laughs> Who dare mess with my day chilling on the mountain? That's right. He's got rock chuck babies to make. I believe in you, baby. That's right. He's got them to feed. He's got a whole colony up there. Just five that shots, right? Yep, around. five. <clears throat> and we have no hits on the Creedmoor. Moving on to the six arc bolt gun. <sighs> With EC tuner brake. We're shooting some 108 grain ELD match, correct? That is correct. Hornady match factory ammo that we've tuned with the EC tuner brake. Thing is, he's doing all the heavy lifting for the next four guys. Sure is. Yep. Now, in theory, this platform would be uh, a little bit closer to home in terms of setup. What are you expecting to see here? Well, I know from first-hand experience it's possible, but it's gonna it's gonna depend on the weather conditions and atmospherics, etc. So what kind of velocities are we seeing around the target with this particular cartridge? 2705. At the most, what about downrange? Where uh, are we going I there? believe it was at about 1060 hitting the target. So it's transonic about 100 or 200 yards ahead of, of Harold. That presents a, another level of challenge. It definitely does. making some adjustments on the optic again. Go for the chain. Further adjustments. Trying desperately to put a round on target. Mm -hmm. Send another one. Eric Cortina makes our first hit on target with the six arc bolt gun. That is an impressive shot. You can see that flashbang with the naked eye at 1280. How impressive is that? That is that is really cool. And it's actually a really affordable product too. Yeah. Much less than you would think. Yes, wind calls, hits, misses, anything in between. The rock trucks are even gonna pitch in on this one. We've got a whole army of people giving their opinion, <laughs> skewing the results. I run out of elevation. He's going He's going okay. to dial his, his hearing for F-Class John. That's right. Hey, do you want this under the bipod? Yeah. Now, this is a very customized solution here. Magneto speed box, bipod, then the rifle. That's right. Plus a bag somewhere in the mix. I think Paul Phillips gave him the idea for the plastic box. I really think that adds another layer of stability to the whole situation. Yes, absolutely. It, it dampens all the, all the shock. <laughs> let's let's yeah. let's bipod bounce. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's got one hit with the six R. Can he do it? That is with not arguably the most challenging platform for this shot. I'll mention that six arc subsonic 108 grain bullet at at three quarters of a mile. That's not an easy shot. That is not easy. Yeah, and to see what's going on, you can't see trace easily. You can't see hits and misses easily. Of course, we've got the flashbangs. And this so. is a man that has made many, many long shots. That is right.
No First round sent, no impact. Dustin? Ready, John? Ready. No, this is a different dynamic. No trade. What's the velocity at target? 800. That's a 45 ACP rolling over there. With a 55 grain projectile. <laughs> right. FMJ, non match. All it does is piss Harold off. And we're out no hits with the AR. You guys about to, you're about to find out. You're about to learn. Well, Eric, that was unexpected. The results, we thought the 6.5 Creedmoor was going to be kind of the gimme. Well, you guys had sighted them in a couple of days ago, but the density altitude was drastically different. It was, from what I could guess, it was about 4,500 different. Wow. And I had to go first, so... I just kept clicking down, clicking down, and of course, five shots is not enough, especially if you're not seeing splash. I saw splash on my fourth shot, made a correction on my fifth, but I was out. So I think if I would have had one or two more, I probably would have gotten it. <laughs> now the uh, the arc, because of the data that I had from the Creed, I transferred it to the arc, came down, and then I started hunting for it, and of course I got a uh, impact on my last shot. Now, how do you feel about your performance with the AR-15? <laughs> I think it was on par for the course. <laughs> about as expected, would you say? Uh, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say you took one for the team leading on this one. This was a really different, difficult situation to lead with. Yeah, and even after uh, I got done, I gave the, the rest of the competitors the wind call, and they were able to connect a little better, but it was still difficult. Even with the wind call, it was difficult. Certainly not an easy shot. We're going to see how you hold up as the competition progresses. Thank you. That's right, John. Eric took one for the team going first. That was a bit intense. You know, he presented a lot of good information, we hope, to get these other shooters potentially making hits. Will that change the game for the rest of the shooters? What do you think? I think it, it just depends on whether they can see that trace or whether, and, and when they, whether they can see the the miss and we saw dust clouds on some and we saw nothing Harold is close to skyline so that makes it really difficult if you go over his head yeah if you're shooting high you're not getting any nothing. feedback at all no trace with 223 Peter Milan is up next to bat what are your thoughts here can the South African pull this off it depends on how acute his senses were picking up cues and and, and looking for hints that's, that's my thinking. They were not allowed to look through any magnified optics while the other shooter was going. Which is fair. Okay, so Pete, this is just a walk in the park for you. You could probably do this all positional in a PRS match, no? Yes, I could. <laughs> Eric Cortina called this the impossible shot. What do you think? I think Eric needs to shoot more PRS. Woo! Shots can, fired. <laughs> can Pete back that up? We are about to see. Good luck, Pete. Okay, our next shooter on the line, Gavin. Peter Milan from South Africa. 6'5 Creedmoor. Yep. Stag Arms Bolts gun. The new pursuit. Some of the first guys to shoot this thing. It's this pretty now, cool. Now, let's talk about the, the rifle itself. What's the uh, barrel length on this fluted barrel we've got? 22 inch. Got a 22 inch, 6'5 Creedmoor. Swappable bolt head. Now, this is a relatively new platform that we're seeing from Stag Arms. Yeah, it's not yet available to the public, and so these guys are getting a, a bit of a preview here. Getting a preview to start to really work it, and we're, we're hoping to see some more hits today. That's right. Okay, guy. First shot. I saw that. I saw a dust cloud there.
Gavin, how is his PRS experience playing into this? Well, he's used to seeing Trace, and he's used to shooting at these distances. So I'd say it's it's a definite advantage. <laughs> Let's see some flashbang here. <laughs> We're getting a lot of groans from the crowd. No information, just... A little bit of sadness. No 6.5 Creedmoor impacts yet. Okay. Can I get a mag, please? Thank you, sir. We've moved on to the 6 arc. That's right. Action. This is a gun I built. I built on the channel. I chambered it. It's got the MDT Frontier timber. And the EC tuner break out front. That's right. Now this cartridge was not designed for a bolt gun. How is that going to play into this? Well, you know, you've got a little bit less horsepower than you would with, with something like a 6 Dash or a 6 GT. Uh, but it really does quite well. Now, uh, we've got a 6 Dasher shooter on the line. That's right. Is there going to be some familiarity between those two cartridges? Absolutely. This is going to be the same bullet weight range. This is a 108 grain projectile. Pete's probably shooting like a 105 or a 109. I'm shooting 109, so that's completely different. <laughs> it's completely different, evidently. He says it's completely different. We're calling BS back here from the commentator. These booth. are some of the pickiest people you'll meet in the entire world. Let's you see, what he's doing way. is setting up the massive international excuses here. So, John, uh, one grain is one one seven thousandth of a pound. That's the difference between the bullet he was talking about. First shot down range. I think I saw something. Did you see something there? Yeah! Hit! Yeah! Second round. Peter Millard with the hit and the six arc. Nice job, Peter. Hit! Oh, two in a row! Oh, Ooh, dust little dust cloud. cloud there. And he is out of rounds. Excellent shooting from the South African. Absolutely. On that one. Uh, that little, it's a little cartridge that could, if you know what I mean. That odd that we're seeing more hits out of that with the 6R. And it's the only one I chambered. Bringing it together, man. <laughs> now he's going ahead and uh, getting his 223 set up the stag arms spectrum rifle yep so john let's think of an analogy what is this sh shot like is this like trying to hit someone on the football field with an orange from like the nosebleed section no, i was going to say that. more like a spitball from the empire state building <laughs> peter malone on the final green this, with the 223 this could be amazing but this is the anticipation now every again shot. for the folks watching at home we are calling hits and impacts on the AR. We're calling wind, we're calling everything. Peter Milan so far leading on this stage. Yeah. Hail Mary, baby. Last one? Six with two more went. Oh. Nothing. And we've gone to bolt lock. Unfortunately, no hits for the Stag Arms AR. Harold is laughing. So far. What'd you hit at? However, still a valiant effort. Two hits with the six arc. Very well done. Peter Milan, how was your performance on the ELR stage? I I did very well. Com 
like given the challenging conditions i got two hits which was awesome and uh, i think that just helped being on a familiar platform six millimeter bad tr trigger take combo it was like i was at home mm -hmm. so it wasn't just two hits it was two hits in a row and we got to review the footage because the flashbang was still flashing during one of your shots do you yeah. think that might have been a hit i actually had a brief chance to review the footage yet already and I don't think so, but the first one was like center and the next one was right next to it. So I don't know if because it's like a frame rate thing, so maybe we'd have to double check the drone. Looking for extra hits on this one, aren't we? How do you feel about the AR-15 at this distance? I think it's not a, well, I don't think, I know it's not a true reflection of that rifle's capability. The target is just beyond what the rifle system is capable of. You know, if you're hitting I think that, that's it's, a fair assessment. Yeah, it's love. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see how you do on the next stage. Beautiful. Jim, we're going deep right now. What are your thoughts? Deep is fine. Deep without good dope on these guns is a really bad idea, especially when there's vegetation all around and you can't really spot your hits. So, I mean, you might as well just aim wherever. Well, you at least got to sight in one of the one rifles. Of the guns is sighted in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a 223 at 1,270 yards. It's going to be fun. Well, Jim, we are rooting for you. Good luck, Jim. Jim is on the line. All right. What are we expecting out of Jim? I think we're expecting some surprises here. Sure. First round downrange. No connection. Did you see it? I didn't. Now we've got some, some warmth coming on. Mm hmm. Jim is comfortable in the heat. Oh! We've got a little dirt splash out there. He's got an indicator. Teasing it in. Come on. Make it happen, Jim. There are no mulligans here. I want to see this hit. Third round, no impact. Ah. Man, that is a far shot. That is a long shot. It is a long shot. The more I see these guys, you know, unable to connect on this gun, it's presenting to be difficult. Ah. Oh. Come on, buddy. And he is out of rounds on the pursuit. Can you stay there? I'll bring you a gun. Thank you. I got a on Do you know why? John, do you know why? What kind of velocities are we seeing out of a 22-inch barrel with a 6.5 Creedmoor? I'm going to guess you're at about 27.50. Uh, so at about 27.50, when are we going transonic? Well beyond a thousand. I'd have to run the numbers on that. I'm so going to guess 1,400. It is in the range of the target starting to lose a significant amount of velocity. The bullet potentially starting to destabilize as it transitions out of supersonic flight. Yeah, I think with the 6.5 Creed, you're going to be supersonic just over Harold's head, maybe another three, 400 yards. With the 6 Arc, that transonic uh, threshold, you're subsonic one to 200 yards ahead. And with the 2.2.3, you're down to 800 I find feet it, per second. I find it fascinating to see these hits happening. Yeah. Jim setting himself up on the 6 Arc. Yep. We'll call this the Gavin rifle. <laughs> First shot out of the Gavinator 5000. <laughs> it's it's called the Gavantina. The Gavantina, it's, sorry. It's Gavin on the back. And I got the, the old front. model. <laughs> Oh. Second round, no impact. Dang it, man. Several Just groans indicating it was very close. Jim is concentrating. My eyecrometer can't measure that from here. Oh. We're dancing around Harold right now. They are virtually calling uh, windage by going, oh. Now we've got a valley here shifting winds all the time. Kevin, I've got a question for you here. We're gonna we're gonna bring it around if he uh, connects it. Yeah. Give him a second. Get in the hole. Ooh. 
Dang! You were close, bro. We've had several shooters on the same rifles in the sun, direct sunlight. Yep. Are these guns getting hot? I'd like to I'd like to feel the barrel. I think I think there's enough cool down time where, where things are gonna be reasonable. If we were putting ten rounds through at a time, we'd be we'd be hitting up heating up big time. Remember you got a small powder charge in that six arc. And you got a pretty heavy barrel. What kind of powder charge are we talking about here? Let's dive into it. We've got the opportunity. So this was eighty two oh eight XBR. Okay. And I wanna say we were down around the twenty four to six grain range. That's so, surprising. Compared to a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is going to have 40, 44, somewhere yes, in there. a fair amount more case volume. A lot more energy going into the barrel and downrange. Now, Backfire Jim, Jim Jim Rooney, is uh, <laughs> preparatory on the AR. Yep. Floating the left bipod leg. <laughs> that is a technical ability there. There we go. Might have pinched it in there. This is true rock chucking right here. This is, hey, buddy, I bet you can't hit that kind of material. I want to see this happen before the day is done. We got wind coming straight at us, it looks like. Hi left. Would you say the impact is about the same as dropping a rock from about two foot up? How high and how left? Over the back. Several, several seconds. They come down four mils, come to the right. What's fascinating about this is we've got several experts yeah. in this field of long range shooting helping. We're giving this everything we got here. I think if you gave me a 30 round mag, I might be able to do it. Perhaps a 50 round drum. <laughs> Full auto with tracers, walk it under the target, right? Running low on rounds, can he do it? I had the wind, but it was over the back again. Ah, shoot. Is that five? I think that was five. That was five, but you got some more rounds in there. Why don't you just mortar it? Heck yeah, man. We've got bonus rounds going on here. Jim Halpert from the office <laughs> is up to bat. Mag dump. <laughs> All that noise, no impact. <laughs> Jim, how do you feel about your performance so far today on the ELR stage? It was tough. It was fun seeing the rifles, though. Nobody hit with the 6.5 Creedmoor. I was surprised by that. I thought for sure that would probably be our best chance. But you did an awesome job with that arc build. Thank like, you. You can you can tell when a rifle is dialed. You can tell when it's you know responding to your input on the, on those long shots, and it, it is. That's an awesome gun. Yeah. Thank you very much, and good luck, Jim, with the rest of the competition. Nils, are you ready for the deep shot? Hold on. Now I'm ready. Is that the technical term? <laughs> no, I think my years of pistol experience are really going to pay off on this shot. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah, I think so. I'm too. feeling good. I'm feeling good. Good luck, Nils. We've got Nils Jonathan up to bat. Yeah. Taking the first tee. Do you think this world champion pistol shooter disruptor. is going to be able to pull this off? This he is did a perform disruptor. well with the long guns yesterday. That's right. Up, upper trail two gun, man. He he nailed it. This is going to be a disruption. I'm, I'm predicting it. Now, this is not a Turkish bolt gun, so we're not sure how it's going to perform for him. He does very well with the Turkish products. <laughs> it doesn't have a flared magwell. Will he fumble? Not sure. We'll see how he goes for the reload. Here we go. Again, 6.5 Creedmoor, 1,280 yards. No impact. Nothing. Eric Cortina giving advice to his fellow competitor like a real champion does. I forgot it was a bolt gun. <laughs> this gun is fully semi-automatic. Now this Pursuit line is going to have a few different flavors. We're excited to see what comes out 
later this year. It's a make it your it's a make it your own rifle, basically. Sort of like the make your own walk that we had for dinner last night, which was delicious, by the way. Thank you. Very good, very good. I'm told by Ryan from Sag Arms that they are going to do a Mongolian barbecue version of this gun. What do you think that's going to look like? I think it's any color you want it, and you just kind of put all the furniture down, grab the blind, and strap it down. No impacts yet. That was a mil and a quarter right. Next gun. Movie. So we can do man's gun. I got you, Mel. Oh. Eric, half close with me. Thank you. You committed to that, right? The Mongolian barbecue version? I'm good. It probably looked like the Colonel Musk. Yeah. Okay, Nils Johnson stepping up to bat with the six arc. He's dry firing right now. So how does that uh, tuner break work? You're making micro adjustments to the barrel harmonics. And what's nice about that is we had factory ammunition to work with. We can't adjust our load. So we can adjust barrel harmonics and get things as good as we can get, basically, with, with without having any load parameters to deal with. Now, as you built the Gaventina, was that a consideration from the start? Once I settled on factory ammunition for the event, that's where I decided we got to have this. I can appreciate that. Making some fine adjustments to the optic. Our wind has changed a little bit if you look at the stag flags. Oh! Oh! Wow. Give me a second. The Gavin, the Gaventina is rocking it, and the shooters are rocking it. Oh! Ooh, and a slight miss. Right First round impact. Though. Ryan Donahue has offered to move the stag flags over to Harold just to help everyone out. We'll see him in three hours. <laughs> yeah. uh, more groans from the crowd. That impact, really impressive. That was awesome. First round hit with the six arc. With the Gaventina, again, Right, Sorry, sir. not the Gavinator 5000. <laughs> Again, my bad. Last year's model. <laughs> Everyone gets and confused. Cardiac. Yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> now, he has used this rifle in anger on Rock Chucks yesterday. How do we think it's going to go against Harold today? I think he needs some revenge. The, the rock truck evaded, right? And and Harold's just sitting up there. It's time he to take needs care some of retribution. That's absolutely right. This is personal. First round impact with the 6R. Can he do it with the AR? Let's find out. Well, this is a dry fire, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Could you uh, hurry the f up? <laughs> you didn't put a time limit on it, so it's your fault. HTFU. <laughs> now that was a really good dry fire. I'm really impressed with that work. And then we'll just work. edit some sound and a ding in post. Yeah? I'm really impressed with the re the recall reduction and the sound reduction on that dry fire. First round down range. No impact. Yeah. Now again, for the crowd at home, we are getting some assistance from the peanut gallery on this one for yep. everyone. 
We want to see hits. World Champion Peanut Gallery. That's actually very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I need a pocket Eric Cortina. Can you uh, can you sell that? How many? Just bring him to my range. That's a lot of mills, Eric. Another round down range. No hits yet. Again, no impact. Oh. Harold lives. Dang it. I didn't hit it. <laughs> well, Nils, that was pretty exciting. Tell me about it. Well, like I told you, my pistol experience was going to pay off on this 1,300-yard shot. So <laughs> would I get a first-round hit with the long range? Yes, with the six arc. That was the only first-round hit of this entire stage. Really impressive, honestly. Legitimately impressive. How do you feel about missing entirely with AR-15? I don't feel bad at all because everyone did. <laughs> I think you should feel bad about it. What do you think? It, that's <laughs> that's kind of one of those things where it's an impossible shot, right? Like if anyone hit that, everyone would have been 100% over the moon, right? Um, it's way beyond the weapon system's capabilities. Uh, but I mean, we came close a couple of times. We, uh, we scared Harold. <laughs> Harold remains in the distance. We are excited to see how you do on the next stage. Good luck, Nils. Adam, I know you've shot long range. How are you feeling about this? Give me the lowdown. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of crazy wins, so I think if, if I can see my hits, we ought to be able to make something happen. The rumor is that if you do get a first round hit at 1280, you will do a backflip. Is that true? <laughs> I could try. <laughs> All right, good luck, Adam. Now, Mr. Hootie Who. Sorry, apologies, Stagarm, Senior Hooty. All right, shoot her up. Now, this is a very talented shooter that represents the everyman. He's performed very well so far. We're going to see how he does here. Now, we do have a little bit of dust cloud there. This is a very different environment than where he's from yeah we got we do have wind right now so wow i saw that first one and saw nothing on the second shoot her up Nope. Now again, we're going to bring this back around uh there were threats of a backflip with a first round impact with the 223. <laughs> plus, plus, unable to rates. connect with the 65 Creedmoor. Golly! On to rifle number two. Goose egg so far. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We've seen some solid results with the six arc. Lining up the shot on the six arc. Wind has died down a little bit. 
Now, as a result of this beautiful environment, we are really seeing changing conditions. First round. Swing and a miss on that one. We're hearing wind calls from the peanut gallery. There's a faint whisper. Could have been a rock chuck. Not sure. Oh, a little splash of dust there. Oh, yeah. Harold just got sprayed with dust. Harold is a dusty bastard right now. Waiting to see those green lights. Yes, Senior Hooty brings oh, the man. heat. Could you could you feel that we were all pulling for Mr. Hooty Who there? I it, I could feel everybody tensing up. Do it, man. Do it. Make Despite it. this being okay, a competition, now. there really is a team effort behind it. <laughs> there is a brotherly love amongst all of the shooters. A lot of respect. Everybody, despite the competition, looking to help each other. Absolutely. That's no nonsense. Yeah. That's the truth. And that was the goal. Come here to learn from the world's best, you know? Now we've got a very challenging shot he's lining up here. Again, the Stag Arm Spectrum AR-15. John, this is the last hurrah. This is it. Two and a half mils. If, if a 2 2 three hit is going to yep. happen, this is, this is the time. There is a lot is riding on this large man's shoulders. <laughs> yep. With the tiny gun. Really looking to dial her in. Now, how difficult is that target to acquire through that optic right now? The target is not hard to acquire. Harold is very pasty white against a lush green grass background. He stands out fairly well, plus his bling. All right, shoot her up. Shot. Ooh, unfortunately, no call. Into the brush. Give him the up two mil, good windage. Wow, this is difficult. Gavin, would you say this is a bit of a crap shoot in this, this shooting area? You've shot here before. You shot lots of different cartridges in this area. Is it always changing? 223 is very difficult at 1,000, and this is almost 1,300, and a lot, a lot happens between 1,000 and 1,300, a lot. What kind of things happen? <laughs> Are we talking about uh, mortgages, changing uh, interest rates? Or is it simply just running out of gas? It's <clears throat> getting tossed all over the place. So sort of bald tires out there. <laughs> <laughs> no ABS. Winging it. Okay, Mr. Hootie Who, you had one hit today. How did that go? I thought well, I got the hit with the six arc. I could see my hits with the creed more so i'm super disappointed i slowly walked it in i'm i'm pretty sure i missed the creed more like three times within six inches now how about with the ar-15 was that just uh, on a wing and a prayer that was just a guessing game it started low and let it come up high <laughs> well we made that one extra hard and that's going to be a challenge for next time adam good luck on the rest of the competition well that was a challenging stage that concludes Rifle ELR.
Yeah, you know, I was really hoping to see some more hits with that Creedmoor. Mm -hmm. These guys really struggling to rope it in. It is a long shot. Yeah, I don't know if we had quite the right ballistics and quite quite a perfect zero. Those things are super critical when you're trying to pull this off. Absolutely. And then we had the AR-15 made of pure hope and dreams today. <laughs> that is a really tough shot. That was not fair. Not fair at all. Us folk that designed the stages, that was kind of a dirty trick. But we had to try. We did have some really interesting teamwork at play, and it was really cool to see a world champion assisting a world champion. That kind of thing is not something you see every day. I'm excited to get to the next stage. Let's head up. Let's do it. Next time on the Rock Chalk Olympics, the competitors make their way back up to the ridge line, this time led by PRS shooter Peter Milan in a challenge that's much like a PRS stage, but with Rock Chuck targets. Additional sponsors for the 2023 Rock Chuck Olympics include Long Shot Cameras, see your target without leaving your spot. Athlon Optics, ridiculously good optics. Panic, superior firearms. Hornady Ammunition, accurate, deadly, dependable.